We are at the Samsung Network booth right now, and with me is Srini Sundararajan, and he has taken, given us a tour of what 5G would look like behind the scenes. So, can you tell us about what what's exactly happening over here? You know, actually, we we have been the first operator, first first vendor, who has demonstrated. We has commercially deployed 5G now, both in these below six gigahertz and above six gigahertz, and uh, in US and in all the three operators in Korea. So today what we are demonstrating is the various products that we have as well as the different use cases, one that has been commercially deployed as well as use cases that are being trialed in many other countries in Europe and in Asia today with Samsung Gear. And we are also today showing off our next generation chipsets which, uh, which actually decreases the size, the power consumption and the operational expenses of the new 5G uh, base stations significantly from the fourth generation equipment. These are some of our big highlights today. Uh, you may also be aware that the Mobile World Live, which is the overall telecast that happens in Mobile World Congress, which covers not only this facility, but many hotels in Barcelona. This is also being carried by the Samsung 5G network, as well as Samsung 5G smartphones today. That's very exciting. We are able to see the future right now in a lot of ways. Um, uh, can you tell us what are some of the, uh, you know, uh, uh, basic, uh, you know, use cases that are associated with 5G? Right. Uh, actually, there are different types of use cases. When you look at the above six gigahertz, you get a much larger pipe. So this is where many people talk about FWA or bringing a large pipe or a, like a wireless fiber type of technology to connect the lost mile homes or enterprise type of stuff. And this is what some of our customers like Verizon Wireless has done in North America. But if you get into sub gigahertz type of uh, technology like in Korea, you get a lot of uh, other types of applications, including smart factories, including uh, automated uh, cafe uh, type of area. Uh, then you have a hotspots kind of technology. Then you move into smart factories. You move into the, uh, uh, the whole area of uh, surveillance type of things. A whole variety of use cases are coming in in that area using the different powers of 5Gs. The 5G has three major components, all three are getting used, including the big pipe, including the latency uh, of zero, uh, near zero, and the uh, massive IoT type of technology. All the three use cases are being laid out depending on one the spectrum, depending on which is the most beneficial for that particular country and operator. Right. So when 5G comes to India, we're going to re eventually realize that the use cases that are you know, present abroad are very different from what they are in India. So uh, what do you think about that? What are the, what are the key differences uh, in the two uh, places? Yeah. From, from yeah. I think there are uh, the use cases, the many use cases will be common, uh, but the, the type of uh, usage or type of volume of use may be very different. And so the devices may have a different kind of needs with respect to India versus abroad. But if you look at something like an FWA that is very applicable in India, just like it's applicable everywhere else, uh, things like 5G form may be much more unique from an India perspective today. But there are many use cases like the, uh, what we use in education, uh, what we use in the uh, hospitals, smart factory. Uh, these are use cases that will be very relevant for India also. And so we will see how these things uh, form out over the next uh, several quarters as we trial them out in India. Right, and what's the status of the 5G rollout, uh, 5G infrastructure rollout in India? How far has Samsung reached uh, when it comes to you know uh, tying up with network operators in India? Yeah, actually today we are still in the trial stage. Our trial has been announced with the Department of Telecom today, and that's where all our focus is at this stage. The discussing with the operator and what gets rolled out will be determined post spectrum auction is when we'll have a more clarity on the use cases that are going to be selected by the operator and the necessary equipment required for those use cases. Right, and uh, 5G as a technology has its own shortcomings, has its own shortfalls. Uh, one of them, the, one of the biggest ones is that, you know, it, it, since it operates at a higher wavelength, it is very susceptible to, uh, you know, interferences, minor inter interferences. So how are you planning to, you know, overcome that problem? Yeah, I actually, uh, a good example is in uh, Verizon Wireless. There were a lot of questions when it started, but the uh, field studies have shown it has uh, really, really working quite well with respect to what the expectations are. As you indicated, there are definitely challenges on the millimeter wave, uh, but we do believe there is uh, technology is maturing. The process of uh, how do you optimize, how do you create RF, and we have our own tools to provide a three-dimensional RF planning 
uh, from a 5G perspective. And some of these tools are getting enhanced as they're getting rolled out in many countries. So we do believe the technology will be quite mature as it moves down to India uh, in the near future. Right, and finally I want to ask one question. Um, how is 5G going to change the shape of the final smartphones? That, uh, smartphones are something that you know consumers use all the time. So when 5G comes, you're going to see that you are going to have higher speeds. Uh, you have low latency. So that will, I, I personally feel that that will uh, directly influence the kind of smartphones we get. You will need higher battery capacities to cope up with the high power of the chipsets. And uh, you know you might probably need some higher storage as well. So, how? What's your view on that? Will it shape yeah. smartphones? Yeah, you know, I, I, you know, I can't talk about the devices that much, uh, but of course, as 5G, the use cases will drive the devices. And uh, you know, as an example, if you take something like a smart city, you're not talking smartphone. You're talking a lot of uh, sensors type of devices. Uh, if, if when you are looking at FWA, you are talking about the home CPE type of devices. Uh, so there are different types of devices ecosystem that will come into play and uh, I think depending on which use cases the India really starts driving where there is a business value as well as societal value that will drive uh, the ecosystem of devices that are required and so on. Uh, Thank you.